Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. I am sorry I'm late, but I just got through cooking dinner, eating dinner. I don't have my music set up yet. One of the trips that I uh, went in the kitchen for was to get my earbuds, but that's okay. We'll just use these. Maybe I won't jerk them out of my ear like I usually do. These stay in a lot better than um, the ones that I have in my purse. They're horrible. Okay. So today is National Day of Prayer. And so we are going to talk about prayer. We are going to pray for our nation. And because I missed the, like, all the things that people had today, I missed because I was doing something else. And, uh,. I'm going to get this added when we pray. So I shared uh, when we pray. Uh, I think this is what I'm listening to. And uh, such a good song. I forget how good it is. Yeah. Okay, that needs to go bye-bye. Okay. I got my music ready now. Let me go ahead and turn it on. So we're going to jump into some prayer. And uh, we're going to pray about our nation. We're going to pray for the lost. We're going to pray for um, just a lot of different things. And then I have a list here. <laughs> I'm so well equipped. I wrote it. And like nobody but me would be able to read it. So I've been working on a complicated thing that used to be so easy that you just jump in your car and go and do, but because of our fun little disease that came about, a lot of things have changed. So we're going to jump into some prayer. If you have any prayer requests, then leave them in the comments. And if you watch this later, just leave them in the comments and I uh, will pray. For those things but now we are going to jump into some prayer oh that thing okay there we go god we just praise you and thank you for all the many blessings that you have given us god that you are in control that you are on your throne god there is nothing that you do not see there is nothing that you do not hear god just help us to be more humble. Help us to be more respectful. Help us to see you as the supreme authority over all things. And that we need to respect you. And if we respect you, if we love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength, it is so much easier to love others. And it is so much easier to walk in righteousness. God, we thank you that you created us. You created us. For your plan and purpose you created us for your greatness not our own and uh, you are our sustainer our provider our protector you are our shelter in the storm you are our strength you are our refuge god we want to thank you for that we know god that you are the righteous judge that nothing is hidden from you and that you know all hearts and you know all minds God, we just praise you because you are trustworthy, you are loving and kind and compassionate, and you are patient. You keep all of your promises, God, and all of your prophecies will be fulfilled in your Bible, in your word, <clears throat> in the Bible, in your word. And God, we just, uh, we just thank you for loving us. We just love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And we thank you for calling us as your children, God. We know, God, that when we do pray, when we pray, hearts shift. When we pray, mountains are moved, God, by your power, not by ours. Just because we are willing to humble ourselves and call out to you, God, with our supplications. God, we do pray for the lost. We pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth. We just pray that you would um, allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. 
God, we just pray that you would soften their hearts. We pray for the prodigals to return, God, for them to see where they are, for them to return back to you, for them to repent of their sins, God, and to be made whole again. God, we also pray for our nation, God. It is not a nation where all follow you, God. Many follow other gods. Many follow false gods. They are not all following the one true God. God, we just pray that you would draw them to you as your children. We know that you created every one of us. You created us all, everyone in this world, for your plan and purpose to be fulfilled and not our own. God, people are worshiping man or uh, following man instead of following you, God. Many are following our enemy instead of you. Many are following money. Many are following just different things, God. And we know that you don't want anyone to perish, God, that you want all to come to you, all to come to Jesus to be saved. God, we just pray that you would uh, rise up an army in our nation, God, that stands on your truth, that stands uh, stands together, stands united under Jesus. God, we just pray for this. We pray for this army to rise up of your people, God. We pray for the younger generations, God, to be saved through Jesus. And we pray for you to raise them up, to give them the wisdom. God, I've seen some really young people that have such great godly wisdom already, and they're so young. And if they just continue to follow Jesus, they will know so much by the time they get to be my age. God, we just praise you and thank you and we just lift up all of our government officials every one of them god they may not want prayer at the white house but god they can't keep us from praying for them so we do pray for them god we pray for your guidance your guidance and wisdom for them god that they would um change their minds that you would change their minds and their hearts about many things many laws that they want to pass against the Americans that just are not, they do not even line up with your word. God, we just pray that you would change their hearts and minds, God. We pray that you would guide and direct them, that you would direct their paths. We do know we do ha that you do have children in our government, God, and we pray that you would bless them for standing up for the truth and for being obedient to your call. God, we just praise you for all the many things that you do, God. Just please, God, we cry out to you. Make us one nation under God again. Maybe we never have been that. I don't know, God. I'm praying for revival. I'm praying that you would revive our hearts, God. That you would, the Holy Spirit would make us on fire to share your truth and to share the gospel of Jesus just to light our souls on fire God for you and for your kingdom to further your kingdom God we just praise you and thank you God and we pray for the rest of the world too these same things for the rest of the world God that you would help their governments to follow your ways and not their ways that you would uh, have some people rise up in these other countries God Christians that will stand on your truths God we just pray for guidance and wisdom every day we pray for discernment by the Holy Spirit we pray that you will lead us where you want us to go that you will help us to be obedient in our calls and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, our nation, 
needs a lot of prayer. So let's go to Second Chronicles, which I have. I have it marked because I read it like every day last year. Well, starting from March through the, the end of the year. Then um, I had a new vocal focal verse, not vocal focal verse in Isaiah that I felt like God was um, giving me. But this is Second Chronicles seven fourteen and fifteen. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. You know, we lack a lot of humility in our country. Our country is very prideful um, in that they do not want to rely on God. They don't want to come humbly. They think they can do it. But we, we can do nothing apart from God. We can do nothing. We can do a lot of things with him. Um, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. We need to uh, seek God, seek his face every day, and turn from our wicked ways. Repent. We need to repent of our sin. You know, what I see that's the biggest thing that is wrong with our country is sin. Sin is what is destroying our country. It is sin. And it is also, like we talked about the other night, it is a lack of respect for authority, starting with God. They don't respect God. They don't believe that God is who he is. They don't believe that God's the righteous judge. But they need to read some over here in the Old Testament and see how he immediately judged many people. Okay, well, let's, let's move on then. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and mine, mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. So if we do these things, then his eyes and his ears shall be open. Do you ever feel like you pray and God's not even listening? Well, it may be that you're not walking as close with him as you need to. You're not walking with a repentant heart. You're just uh, going through the motions, which we as Christians do that sometimes. We just go through the motions, but that's not what God wants. God wants us to come humbly. God wants us to seek him. And God wants us to um, ask for forgiveness, to repent, to turn from our wicked ways. You know, back in the Old Testament, there were some very wicked things that were going on. But guess what? Those same things are going on now. And so it's like we never even evolved. Okay, let's read Psalms 122.6. I'm going to try going forward to really focus on more of the New Testament. I mean, I like the Old Testament. I really do. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it. But I think that we're in a time crunch. And I think that people need to see what Jesus did and see how much Jesus loves them and see how compassionate Jesus is and caring and loving and all the miracles that he did. I think those things need to be seen. Okay. Psalm 122 and 6 says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sakes, I will now say, Peace be within thee. So I'm going to skip back up to the top. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is builded as a city that is compact together. Whither the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, and unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. 
they shall prosper that love thee. You know, Jerusalem, Israel, they we need to be praying for peace for Israel right now too because they are like uh, them and Iran, not really Iran, the country, but um, rebels that are Iranian. They are like lobbing rockets back and forth. So pray for the peace and safety of Israel. Okay, Matthew 5.44. I'll try to remember to do that when we close out. Matthew 5, 44. I'm listening to Power by Chris Tomlin. This is such a good song. We did it at Youth. I really like it. It's one of those that you can clap to. Okay, Matthew 5, 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you what reward have ye do not even the publicans the same and if ye salute your brethren only what do ye more than others do not even the publicans so be ye therefore perfect as your father which is in heaven is perfect so we do need to pray for our enemies. We need to pray for people that persecute us. We need to pray for them. We need to pray that they will get saved. And uh, a lot of times what we believe is foolishness to people that are not saved. So anyway, we need to pray for our enemies. I prayed for our government and I'm going to start doing that more. But I'm going to be honest with you. I've been kind of angry at them lately. But I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to pray that they will um, start doing things for us. That they will represent us instead of trying to represent the world. Because we're the ones that pay taxes. Okay, Matthew 6.6 6 says this. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. And when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Okay, this is the model prayer that Jesus said. Uh, and we, I don't know, we did it the other night too, but we're just going to do it again. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And he says, If ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Okay, so... We got to forgive people. We do it for ourselves. We really don't even do it for them. It gives us a peace when we forgive people. So I'm praying hands on tonight. I actually made these for Relay for Life. Uh, and I still have them already made up. Um, and I have my Pray for Revival t shirt on. I'm all about prayer tonight. 
Okay, so let's read Matthew 26, 41 and see what it says. Hey, my friend Josie. Okay, it says, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The, beer, the spirit, indeed, is willing, but the flesh is weak. And um, this is when Jesus was knew that he was going to go to the cross, and he kept praying to God. And um, his apostles kept falling asleep. And he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. So, he kept going away and praying, and they kept falling asleep. I was going to, I wonder if the temptation is in here in Matthew. I know it probably is. Oh, yeah, it is. So that's what, you know, Jesus was fasting and praying when um, the enemy came and tempted him. Because Jesus would go away by himself and he would pray. And that is so important. Having that prayer time, having that quiet time with God is so important. It just... Um, it just makes your relationship so much better if you just take some time to read God's Word every day and to pray and to even listen to praise music like I'm doing right now. And I start my mornings with kitty praise music because I turn it on for Seth while I finish my first cup of coffee because I need coffee. So Jesus went uh, to the into the wilderness. This is uh, Matthew four, and when he had and when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, "If thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread." But he answered, "It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone." but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So Jesus, a lot of times, would get away and pray. That's a lot in the Gospels. So let's look at Luke 11. 1. I got these verses out of the back of my Bible this time, and they're all in the right order. I may just start doing that, but sometimes you can't find, you can't find just words and scriptures to go with it. Oh, this is, okay. This is just a repeat of the Lord's Prayer, so we're not going to read that. Let's see, Luke 18, 1. Well, that doesn't look like that's... All right, that's not about prayer. So let's go to 1 Thessalonians 5.17. See if this is about prayer. I went too far. Went too far to the right. First Thessalonians five seventeen says pray without ceasing. I have a pray without ceasing t shirt, but I wore it the other night. So pray without ceasing. 
All right, 16 says, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesyings. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. So, again, pray without ceasing. We need to be in prayer all the time. So let's look at James 5.13. James, James, where's James? James 5.13 says, in his, in, Is any of you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he hath committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death, and shall hide a multitude of sins. So we need to be, we need to be sharing the gospel with people. So let's look at Ephesians... 618. I'm listening to Our God by Chris Tomlin. No matter what youth group we have come along, they like this song. There's something very powerful about this song. Okay, 618, praying always with all spirit and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak but that ye also may know my affairs and how I do. Tychius, a, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known to you all things, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that ye might know our affairs, and that he might comfort your hearts. Peace be to the brethren in love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. Wow. Paul was such a good writer. And uh, I love the way he begins and ends his letters. You know, he introduces himself as, you know, the one that's writing and then it's just like 
grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I really like the way that he writes. So I think that's all the verses that I wanted to look up. If you can think of anything that go that goes with prayer, then put it in the comments. And I forgot to read what I put on Facebook today about the National Day of Prayer. I did a little bit of a rant. I normally don't rant about things, and it really didn't have anything to do with prayer. But, oh, I lost my cross that was on my necklace. Oh, well. Okay, so um, this is what I wrote. I, uh, I shared the song by Torrin Wells called When We Pray. So I said, I think this fits National Day of Prayer, which today is National Day of Prayer. Whether our government wants, wants to recognize it or not, they didn't do their, like, their ceremony like they used to do. I love this song and message by Taryn Wells. The lyrics of this song are so powerful, and I love the pictures in this video by Brother Earl. I like Brother Earl's videos. We use a lot of his videos for youth. A lot of his videos have the same pictures that I use in my lyric videos. So I think Brother Earl and I could probably hang. Um, personally, my prayer right now is to be able to get my driver's license renewed tomorrow morning. There is no easy button on this process anymore. I just got through filling out my renewal form. Yes, I said renewal form. And my prayer is that tomorrow morning I will be able to mark this off my list of things that I need done this month. Really last month, but the appointment system is crazy. Like, you can't just get in your car like year before last. We could just jump in our car, take our driver's license, uh, take our insurance and pay the money and get our picture done and get our license renewed. Well, you can't do that anymore. Now you have to go online, you have to make an appointment, or you can, if you don't wear glasses, you can probably um, do it online, but I wear glasses, so I can't renew online. I can't renew on the phone because none of my stuff matches, and I don't know what that's about. So, anyway, it's very frustrating, and it's not like I am a computer illiterate person. I know how to use the computer, and I know how to fill out forms and stuff. So, anyway, just uh, pray for me tomorrow morning that I can get this done. So, um, don't get me started about when you call the local offices. Like, there's a local office number, but it's all automated and all goes back into the state system. And um, there are no humans to be found. I did not, in an hour and a half yesterday morning, I found not, I found zero humans on this site and on the phone and on and then when I sent them an email they said oh we received your email we'll get back with you in um, three to five business days so anyway okay I'm over with my um, okay enough of a rant when I when which I never do and back to prayer which is so important and so needed in our country and all over the world also we really need to hit our knees and be in prayer today and every day for people to get saved through Jesus, to trust God's truth, to learn to respect God in others, to walk in the light and love of Jesus, and to walk in truth. Our prayers are so powerful to break strongholds and to shift hearts. Prayer is conversation with God of thanksgiving, praise, and expressing our concerns and things that we need spiritual help with. It also gives us a stronger relationship with God. One of my biggest prayers is for people to be saved through Jesus, for God to open hearts, eyes, and ears to his truths. Are you saved today? If not, call upon the name of Jesus, 
excuse me, and be saved now. Jesus is the only path of heaven to heaven, the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John three sixteen through 21, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. Okay, so that's what I wrote this morning. I had a, a good day, Josie. We, we will pray for them when we close out. Um, I mostly wanted an opening prayer to pray for our nation. Um, I really feel like it needs a lot of prayer. We need a lot of prayer warriors to stand up for God's truth and quit following um, the enemy of this world. Okay. So now I'm going to do my notes. You may have to go get Seth something to watch because he is coming here. Okay. So good morning, God. Good morning, child. I brought you a new day of mercies and blessings, a new day of opportunities to share my truths and the gospel of Jesus, a new beautiful day, child. And I said, thank you, God, for a new day of mercies and blessings, of new opportunities to share your truths and the gospel of Jesus. Thank you for a new beautiful day. Thank you for all of my blessings, God. Help me to get done what I need to get done today. Help me to focus on you, God, and what you want to say. Uh, And he said, Child, so many people need Jesus as their Savior. Movements are going on across your country. And that's right. We're going to a thing. We're taking our youth to the Jesus People Tour, which is one of those music events where there will be speakers and people will be getting saved. It's going to be pretty awesome. I'm quite excited to go. Um, movements are going on across your country and many are being saved but there are still so many more that are not being saved so the gospel of Jesus is the most important thing to be shared the stories in the gospel are most important right now for people to see who Jesus is and can be in their lives if they invite him in through salvation These are the most important lessons. Today and every day should be a national day of prayer for your country. Much of it has fallen into great sin and does not see the immediate danger of the sin in their lives. And I said, I see this very clearly, God. Many will miss heaven by 18 inches. They think they are saved, but really are not. They have not invited Jesus into their hearts and fully believe who he is and what he did to save them. And he said, child, so many of the younger generations are in this category. They are hard to convince that their sin is leading them down a path of destruction with no return at a certain point. I am the righteous judge that sees all things and knows all things. I cannot be bought, compromised, or threatened. I alone know all hearts and minds and who really belongs to me also. The job of my children is to share my truth and the gospel of Jesus with everyone and to exhibit the fruits of the Spirit too, child. I need people to see the reflection of Jesus in them. I need people to see the light of Jesus in them. Reading my word, praying, praising, and sharing the gospel are the keys to this time that you find yourself in. Yesterday, you let yourself get angry and frustrated over something that you can't control, child. Today, try another way. And I said, okay, God, I will. I said, thank you for meeting me. I did get frustrated. I got angry yesterday. I don't ever get angry. I think my blood pressure got up, too. Um, I Thank you for meeting with me today. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug. He said, I love you, too, child. Now go be obedient to me today in all that I ask. Work for me, child. The reunion and rewards are ahead. But there is still much work to be done, child. 
the race has not ended so shine your light wherever you go and whatever you are doing child the reunion will be so beautiful child and I said Maranatha God all right so how do we want to share salvation hmm I don't know. We'll use that. How about steps to peace with God? I like that one. So, God is offering you steps of peace to Him. Because heaven belongs to God. And God sent Jesus to save us all. So step one, God's purpose, peace and eternal life. God loves you and he wants you to live in peace with him and receive eternal life. The Bible says to have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, the Bible says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5.1 For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Mm -hmm. John 3, 16. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Um, Romans six twenty three. Are you leaving, my friend? I will pray for Mike and the boys and you and your family. You have a blessed night too, okay? Okay, since God planned for us to be at peace with Him, to have eternal life, why are many people not enjoying this experience? Well, that is such a great question. Why aren't people, I mean, I think they think it's so hard and that they have to come perfect, but if they will come as they are, then Jesus, Jesus will do the heart cleaning. Jesus, the Holy Spirit will do the convicting and the desires will change you know desires are not the same when you're saved through jesus so our problem is sin and separation and that is a huge problem right now in our country and all over the world sin and separation from god god did not make us robots to mindlessly love and obey him instead he gave us a will and freedom of choice but like adam we often choose to disobey god and go our own selfish ways this side of our nature is called sin and it separates us from god the bible says for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of god the wages of sin is death romans 3 23 and romans 6 23 so after Adam sinned, the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden. No. But your iniquities have separated you from God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Isaiah 59, 2. I think that's where we are, is that sin has separated us from God. But there's, there's good news. There's good news. And it's not hopeless just because we have sin and we have been separated from God. There is hope, and God's remedy is the cross. Yeah. Jesus Christ is the only answer to this problem of separation from God. He died on the cross and rose from the grave to pay the penalty for our sins, completely bridging the gap between us and God. God has provided the only way, and we must make the choice. So it's our choice. You know, we have free will to choose. But the thing is, with choices, choices uh, hinge our destiny and where we're going to spend eternity. So it's like the most important choice of your life. The Bible says that God demonstrates his own love for us in this while we were still sinners. Christ died for us, Romans 5, 8. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved, Acts 4.12.
For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Jesus Christ, 1 Timothy 2, 5. Verily, very truly, I tell you, whoever hears my word, Jesus, and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. John 5:24. So step four is our response. I'm sorry, that is my son in the background. He wants me to go change his TV, but I am nearly through here. And so I'm just going to keep plugging along. Step four, our response, receive Christ. We can receive Christ when we believe in his message and trust him, trust in him alone to save us. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. I'm sorry, my nose itches. Believe also in me, John 14, 1. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him, Jesus Christ, receives forgiveness of sins through his name, Acts 10, 43. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, John 1, 12. So how to receive Christ? Uh, the one, the first thing we do is we admit that we are a sinner, that we need Jesus. Be willing to turn from your sins. This is where people turn away. But it's okay because once we turn from these sins, once we invite Jesus in, our desires change. We have the Holy Spirit to help guide us. So be willing to turn from your sins and repent. Believe that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross and rose from the grave. Through prayer, invite Jesus Christ to come in and control your life through the Holy Spirit. Receive him as your Savior. So this is, this is the prayer that goes with this. Um, this is uh, goodnewstracks.org. So this is what we pray, and I'm going to leave a space to where you can pray if you would like. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am sinful, and I need your forgiveness. I believe that you died to pay the penalty for my sin. I want to turn from my sin nature and follow you instead. I invite you to come into my heart and life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now that was a very simple prayer, but you know, you don't have to have a a um, perfected prayer because we have the Holy Spirit that will add what needs to be added to our prayers. So if you sincerely prayed this prayer and asked Jesus to come into your life, do you know what he has given you? Your new life, when you receive Christ, you were born into God's family through the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit who indwells every believer. This is called regeneration or new birth. God bless you as you begin your new life in Christ. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, Romans 10, 13. Neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord, Romans 8, 9. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5, 1. He who has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. 1 John 5, 12 through 13. So that's how you receive the steps of peace with God. 
you receive Jesus, his son, oh, no. as your savior. Oh. And so no. if you... <sighs> hey, Seth, what are you chewing on? What is that? Oh, I don't think he's chewing on his shirt. Mm. Okay. So if you invited Jesus into your heart, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. The angels are rejoicing. They're mm -hmm. so happy. And your name is being written in the Lamb's book of life. And you are now mm -hmm. saved, sealed, and sanctified mm -hmm. through, uh, by God through mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, his son. Mm -hmm. And so when the rapture mm -hmm. happens, you will be going. But if you want to draw closer to God, you want a closer relationship, do read his word every day and start in Matthew and then um, pray. Tonight was about prayer. We did the model prayer. We did a lot about prayer tonight. So pray. Pray to God. That's your communication to God. That's your way of thanking him. That's the way of letting him know what you need. That's the way of you praying for others because if we love people, we need to pray for them. And also, um, pray for God to lead you to a church. All Christians need a church family. They need a place where they are accepted and where they can learn about God together and worship God together and um, seek making your profession public by being baptized mm -hmm. also you're not it's it's not going to keep you out of heaven but it's a profession of your salvation I, I, in public I, 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 okay well i think that i came and did everything that god called me to do tonight and I'm going to give you God's blessing and pray for my friend and pray a little bit more. And then I'm going to go and uh, fix my son's dinner because I think he's hungry. I think, too, that's part of his problem is he's hungry. Okay, so number 6, 24 through 26 says, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Pray for me that I can memorize that. I want to memorize it. I don't I want to know it without having to look it up. Okay, we'll have it awesome rest of your night let's pray really quick mm -hmm. god we just come to you and we just thank you god you are so good you are so good you are so great you are so mighty you are so wonderful god you love us so much we cannot even comprehend the love that you have for every one of the people that you have created no matter what race, no matter what gender, God, you created them for your plan and purpose and not their own, God. We just praise you and thank you for all the many blessings that you've bestowed upon us, God. We just we lift up Mike and the boys that he has taken into his home to teach about Jesus, God. We just lift him up to you and we pray for guidance and wisdom for him, God. We pray for provision. We pray for protection. We pray for blessings. We pray, we pray for Josie and her family, for her, her brothers and sisters' families, and for her, um, her, uh, her children and their families, God. We pray for protection and blessing and provision for them. We just pray, God, that you would be with them, that you would lead and guide and direct them in the path that you want them to be on, God, that you would just um, help them, God. If there's any of them that need to be saved, God, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so that they can be saved. We pray for Austin too, God, and we just pray that he would um, 
seek your face every day. We pray mm-hmm. for all of our youth, God. We just pray that you would draw them to you and their mm. parents, God, that they would seek your face every day through your word, through prayer, and through praise, that you would bless and protect and provide for them, God. We also pray for camp coming up, God. We pray, we pray that you would open their hearts to what you want to teach them, God. We also mm-hmm. pray for this um, event on Saturday, God. If it's your will, we pray for no rain. Since both of these are outside activities, we pray for safety. As we drive there and back, God, we just pray that your name would be glorified, that the name of Jesus would be lifted up in Fort Worth just so loud that people that aren't even saved could hear it, God. Let us be loud and proud of our Christianity as we walk with Jesus every day as we shine the light of Jesus, as we try to walk in the fruits of the Spirit, which is a challenge sometimes, God, give us strength to do that. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, well, my friends, much love. Have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome tomorrow. Just Friday, pray that I get my driver's license renewed because I like to drive and I'm very independent and I drive everywhere I go. I don't like to ride with people much. I will, but I don't like it. And uh, much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. I'll see you tomorrow night. I don't know what we'll be talking about, but... Um, know that you are loved tremendously by God. He loves you so much. And if you didn't get saved tonight, then please pray that God will show you that he is real and accept his son as your savior. And good night.